Hey there, and thanks for tuning in to Christ Point Church. We hope that you enjoy today's sermon by our lead pastor, Steve Qualls. Welcome home. Hey, welcome Christ Point community. It's after Easter, so uh, we just wanted to uh, just let you know how much we love you guys. What a wonderful uh, rainy and stormy uh, sun last Sunday we had. I just want you to know whichever service you you attended at uh, in the in the parking lot at uh, at Smithfield campus. We didn't have lightning until we got to service. So we had lightning and thunder at 9 o'clock. We had lightning and thunder at the 11 o'clock service. But what a wonderful, the parking lot was full. So many people encouraged, encouraged me by blowing your horns, encouraged the neighborhood. So while, you know, what a wonderful Easter morning. We, we wanted to do Easter together, and we did Easter together. So we are still under a, a, a pandemic watch. So you know what? We're coming to you again online, and we pray that th- this morning's word uh, just blesses you. The, the, tr- the, the sermon title is we're going to do a couple of weeks at least on after Easter. So we're going to look at what goes on after Easter. So give it some thought. After Easter, I'm going to come back to that in just a minute. But we just want to reiterate the vision statement at Christ Point Church. We're real people living real lives, serving a real God. That's who we are. That is the vision statement wrapped up into one. And I just want to say, TV viewers, oh my gosh, thank you for letting us uh, visit with you in your homes every week. We, we uh, Right into your living rooms, right on your TVs. Thank you so much for allowing us to be there. Uh, DTC customers, Ben Loman customers, thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And we want you to know you are home and Christ, you can call Christ Point your home. So we want to say welcome home Facebook live viewers. Welcome on in this morning. Everything's going good with you, I, I'm assuming. And I'm, 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 I'm expecting that you're, you're hosting your watch parties and we're having church online. So uh, uh, radio listeners and YouTube viewers, all of those linking up, we just thank you so much. We are Christ Point Church. We're one church and we're in two locations as of right now. And we want to say to you, welcome home. So the sermon title is sowing up the victory. Sowing up the victory. And we want to just look at that. I just want to give you a quick study. Remember, we're in a sermon series entitled After Easter. So the sermon title in this series is entitled Sowing Up the Victory. But I want you to notice something with me. Uh, I, I discovered a study several years back, and I wanted to add it uh, that, that is appropriate for what this sermon is, is telling us. Uh, a study from several years years back from 2010 to 2012. That study included a study of churches and people who attended churches and people who invited people to church. Do you know that in, in, in that time frame from 2010 to 2012 that 50% of the churches in the U.S. did not gain a single member? 50% of the entire church population in the United States did not gain a single member. Now, we may not be gaining a lot of members during a pandemic. That's, that's almost nationwide. That's a pretty good figure. And that pretty much is, is, can be, uh, can be uh, uh, put into that category. But that's a category by itself. Although Christ Point is, a, is different. Christ Point, we've already talked to many of you. Many of you are, come, are, are wanting to come to Christ Point Church. You've reconnected with Christ Point Church. You've, you've made Christ Point your Church your home online. And we're going to see you in service. And we're going to be able to hug you and spend faith face-to-face time with you. But 50% of the churches in the U.S. did not gain a single member. That includes both conversion and transfer growth. So someone didn't even move across town or move across. uh, They they just 50% didn't see anybody even come in their doors in those two years. No, that's 160,000 churches. That's 26 to 39 million attendees that could not invite their loved one, their friend, their work, their work partner, their, their neighbor to church. Can you believe that 26 to 39 million people did not invite somebody? Why am I so passionate about this? Because I am a product of the invitation. 
I went to church every day of my life until I was six years old. After that, I didn't go again until I was 25 years old. So for almost 20 years of my life, uh, all the formidable years, all the teen years, all the, uh, all the after high school years, you know what? No church, no God, no voice of the Lord in my life at all. Why am I so passionate about not falling into that category of the 50% church churches in America? Because that's not who we are. So, let's move into the sermon. We'd, I just wanted to give you that and give you that thought so we can think about it while we're talking about sowing up the victory. See, everyone will invite someone, typically, to, a, to an Easter service. Now, we had torrential rains, three and a half, four and a half inches of rain in, uh, on Easter. We had storms. We, we, were in, we were in Smithville and not in Sparta. We were online also. But you know what? I don't know how many of you invited someone. I don't know how many of you did and how many of you didn't. So, see, if you treat the glory of the Lord in the natural or as ordinary, then lives will always be at risk. If we treat the glory of the Lord as natural or as ordinary, then we are going to put lives at risk. Let's look at sowing up the victory. Matthew chapter 27, verse 51. I want you to read it with me. At that moment... At that moment, or behold, the curtain or the veil at the, uh, of, the top of, the, of the temple was torn in two. So behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two. And notice it was torn from top to bottom. So the earth shook and the word says that the rocks split. So we see evidence that something happened. Now you say, when did this happen? Right now, we're still on Easter uh, right now, we're still on, on, on uh, Crucifixion Friday. We're still on Jesus on the cross. When at the hour that Jesus died, at the moment that Jesus died, the curtain of the temple was ripped, ripped in two from top to bottom. Stones began to split open. Uh, uh, dead people began to walk around. Uh, graves were opened up. Uh, and, and, and the word says here that rocks were split. So you know what? Uh, let's read Mark's uh, account. Chapter 15, verse 38. Let's read Mark's account. And Mark says the same thing. Says the same thing. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from the top of it to the bottom. Starting at the top and going to the bottom. Now, you know what? Let me explain to you a couple of things. Let's, so I'm going to do some explaining. So I want to look at the dimensions. Of the, of the curtain, I want to look at the purpose of the curtain and the priest of the curtain, uh, behind the curtain. So I want to look at the dimensions, the purpose, and the priest. So let me give you an explanation and let me give you the dimension or, or, or a little bit of, of uh, uh, Exodus we can find. You can go back at Exodus chapter 26 and give you a little bit of a picture painting of what the curtain looked like. It was blue. And it, it was purple, it was blue, and it was purple and scarlet uh, yarn. And, and that was finely twisted in with, with fine linen to make a, a very durable and, uh, and uh, very beautiful uh, 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 curtain for the temple. So let's look at the dimensions. The dimensions were that it was 15 feet wide by 15 feet tall. So it was a very, very large, very large uh, 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 separation. It was, it, it was, it was huge. It was, it was a curtain. It, the Lord gave it a, a specific size, a, a specific uh, look, and it had to be a curtain. It couldn't be a, a, a wall. It had to be a curtain. So that curtain was 15 by 15. It was, it was reported. That that and I read this from Perry Stone. I don't know if you if you if, you, if, you, if any of you have, have ever followed Perry Stone. Perry Stone's a very uh, a very respected uh, uh, leader in the in the in the Christian community. He said that to test its strength. I like this. I didn't read this in the Bible. I got this from his his uh, uh, research to test its strength. They would connect oxen to the four corners of 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 the curtain. To see if it would tear or pull apart. See, these are, these are if you don't know what an oxen is, they're bulls. They're 1,500, 2,500 pound animals pulling in four different directions. And they could not tear it apart. So that's a lot of brute force to give you an example of the durability 
and the tensile strength and the power and 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 the and, and uh, the longevity by itself of this of this one this one curtain now so we've looked at the dimensions let's look at the purpose what was the purpose of the curtain see in short it was to separate humanity from the presence of god the curtain was there in the old testament to separate the, the, the literal humanity from the literal presence of God. See, it, it would be like entering into thousands and thousands of volts of electricity times millions and billions and trillions. The human frailty, frailty cannot experience, cannot be in that presence. So they had to, they had to separate the presence of, of humanity from the presence of God. So later on, uh, again, later on, uh, 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 Perry Stone, later on, uh, a study that he did said that the latter temple had a little peephole in the top of it so they could come around and make sure conditions because what would happen for the purpose of, of the curtain was the priesthood. Now we're going to move to the priesthood. The priesthood would enter into the Holy of Holies and make sacrifice for the sins of the people once a year. So when he would enter into there. He had to be right before the Lord. He had to be a righteous individual. And he had to be prepared to go into there. And there was said that there was a little peephole. And the peephole they would look into it. Rather than take a risk of entering into it. They would burn incense and they would fill it with smoke. And they had to make sure that the atmosphere was right before they entered into there with the sacrifice. So sacrifice was made unto God for the sins of man behind the veil. So the curtain. Now, now let me just kind of get, get this whole similarity between the priest and what Jesus said. See, the priest would have to have his heart right with the Lord before he could enter in to any kind of atmosphere of the Lord. He was presenting sacrifice for the people. So he had to have his heart right before the Lord. So Jesus said later on, Jesus said, comparing ourselves, each one of us, to the priesthood and saying that to enter into heaven was considered a gate or a path. And he said, the pathway is narrow and few will find the way. But the road, he, he makes this very clear. The pathway to heaven is narrow. So we have to be prepared to fit through narrow openings. But the road to destruction is wide. I preached a sermon several years ago. Partying in the streets. Because the streets are wide enough to have the parties. My father-in-law said years ago to, my, to, to Tina. Years ago, over and over and over. He said, I'm going to tell you, Tina. Heaven's not going to be as easy to get into as what people think it is. Now, it's not complicated. And it's not impossible. It's just we're going to have to pre present, our, present our hearts before the Lord and accept the sacrifice of Jesus in our lives. If not, we're going to find ourselves on the street and not on the narrow path. So I just wanted to make that similarity between the priesthood and, and the righteousness that God requires of us today. So let's go back to that Friday of crucifixion. About the ninth hour. Let me just make that clear. That's about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So about that ninth hour. About that ninth hour, Jesus has passed away. He died around that ninth hour. Around that 3 o'clock time frame. See, this was the time of day that more than likely they were presenting during the Passover. They were presenting the, 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 the sacrifice for the sins of man in the temple. They were going through their, their rituals. They were going through their culture. They were going through what they had always done to present before the Lord in the temple, in the Holy of Holies, behind the curtain, the thing that separated God from man. They were, they were presenting and preparing that sacrifice while the sacrifice for eternity, the sacrifice for of Jesus was being was being carried out and completed on a, a hill a hill called the skull on Golgotha uh, with three crosses and him on the middle that was what was happening 
So, see, the eternal sacrifice was being played out right here while they are preparing something ritualistic over here. But let me just reiterate from, from the scripture we read a few minutes ago. At the death of Jesus. Now, we know at the death of Jesus that, that the earth shook. We also know from, from Sunday last Sunday's sermon, we also know that at the resurrection of Jesus, the earth shook. But let's go back to the death of Jesus. This is what Matthew's account says. The earth shook. He says the rocks split. Now I want to tell you something. I just, I just have to re keep reiterating this. And I spoke this one time to a lady. And she just looked at me. She was from Sweetwater, Tennessee. To be honest with you. And I told her this. And she looked at me. And she said, I'm going to have to think about that. I said, I'm not asking for your opinion. I'm not asking for your approval. I'm just telling you what I think. This is what I think. I think Jesus said, if my people don't praise me, then the very rocks will cry out. And I'm going to tell you, I don't know if you know this or not, but we live on a big round rock. We, 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 are, we have established, uh, we, we have a pandemic going on on a big round rock. So we, we're living on a big round rock and... And, and at the death of Jesus, there's no crying out of praise. There's no worshiping of praise. You know what? That's the ultimate, that's the ultimate uh, 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 being quiet in the presence of the Lord. You know what? The very rocks cried out. The very rocks could not contain themselves. They split. Not only did they split, not only did that happen, but graves opened up and dead people who were, who were buried a few years ago were walking around and talking to people. Not only did that happen, I want you to notice what we're keying in on this morning. And the veil was in the temple was split. The veil was rent, some versions say. It was torn. See, the veil, notice, was not just torn. It was torn from the top to the bottom. So you say, well, what, what, what's that mean? Well, number one, God, remember, God doesn't put filler words in just to make up space so the Bible was thick. He put this in here for a reason because man, number one, could not tear this apart. If oxen can't tear it apart, man can't tear it apart. And if man were to have tried to tear it apart, they would have done it from the bottom up. God tore it from the top down, ripped it completely apart. So the veil was split from the top to the bottom and just so we knew that God did it. Now, why would God tear something up that he told them specifically how to build so many years earlier? See, it's because during that time, during that time, he wanted to make sure that there was no more separation. See, separation from God was over. This was the thing that separated mankind. You know what? You and I live in a different world today than they did. You can, you can stop right now and seek the Lord, seek His face, pray to Him. You can, you can, you can enter His gates with thanksgiving. You can, you can crawl up in His lap if you want to. That is your prerogative. And He created that when He tore that veil apart. He created that, 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 that avenue when that happened. So separation from God was over. God split in two what separated you and I from Him. He tore it apart. See, people could still, people could in that day, and they can still only in this day come to, the, come to Jesus, come to a saving uh, knowledge of Jesus, come to the grace of Jesus through sacrifice. So you say, what does that mean? In the Old Testament, people could only get their sins forgiven or, 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 or remission of sins or covered through the blood of an animal that was sacrificed. And what difference is that today? None. We still have to have, uh, have a sacrifice and the blood of that sacrifice covering us today. And you know what the only difference is? Jesus paid it once and for all and it's done. And we have to apply that blood to our lives. So Jesus didn't become victorious nearly as much in life as he did in death. You say, well, that's sacrilegious. No, no, I'm just telling you the truth. Jesus was powerful in life. Jesus was God and man in life. But I'm going to tell you, and, and, and we're still teaching and preaching, and we will never get to the, to the bottom of the depths of, what he's, of, of, of everything that he has ever, of, 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 of half of what he said. But I'm going to tell you, he became way more victorious in death than he did in life. 
He, became, he was powerful in life. His words are powerful today. But because of what he did for us in death is why we have victory today. So he triumphed over evil. He triumphed over death. He triumphed over the grave and over sin for you and I. He became victorious and he later completed that victory in you and I when we pray that prayer of salvation. That's why he did it. So we entitled this sermon, Sowing Up the Victory. So what happened? What happens now after Easter? Easter's over. Easter's over. For some people in the Americanized world, that means I am finished with church for an entire year. You know what? I am, I, I am I'm saddened by that mentality. What happens after Easter? What, what, what happened to the veil after Easter? See, if we ever just thought to ask, what happened to that? What happened to, 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 to the tomb? What happened to the stone? What happened to the veil? That thing was torn apart. Who fixed the thing? Who fixed the roof that was torn apart so the guys could let their friend down? Who fixed this? Who repaired these things? You know what? What happened to the veil? So when we look, I want to look at Jewish uh, reports from Jewish writings. Jewish writings and Jewish uh, recordings uh, 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 state that the veil or the curtain was was sewn back together by a group of ladies and it took months to do it took months to do that under the strict supervision of the uh, of, of the religious leaders of the day it had to be put together in a certain fashion and it's got to be put back together before next year see before we come back around to another easter we've got to make sure we have it back up because we've got to get back in to our uh, our, our, our our ritualistic religious thing that we do we've got to get it fixed so it's reported that they repaired and sewed back together what god made sure he tore apart they reestablished the separation they reestablished what, 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 what was separating man from God, they put it back together. God tore it apart. God made a statement. See, God didn't, uh, the separation didn't go away when they put, uh, uh, the separation uh, uh, didn't, uh, when, when they put the, 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 the curtain back together, God still had done away with the separation. God had still cast away the separation. He had still torn away the separation. So you know what? We sow up the victory in, in our lives. How many of us have sown up the victory in our lives? How many of us, we feel like we would love to come in a, into the presence of the Lord. We would love to give our hearts to the Lord. But you know what? We may even do that. We may even pray a little bit. We may, you know what? We may even get serious a little bit. But then we get into the routine of not being serious about the Lord. And the next thing we know, we have sown back up the victory. We have sewn back up the separation and we have reestablished the separation between God and myself. As a pastor, you don't hear it like I do. I hope you don't. But as a pastor, I hear it over and over and over. I'm just not where I used to be with the Lord. I'm just so depressed right now. I, I'm just in a place to where I don't feel like I can hear the Lord. You know what? Sometimes God's doing that. Sometimes God's taking us through something. But you know what? A lot of times we've moved away from Him. We've put back up the veil and we've separated ourselves and we've become comfortable with it. So that's where we live sometimes. See, the separation was complete. It was completed. They put it back up. Religion began to flourish again. So today, it's the week after Easter. We're after Easter right now. We have, have we sowed up the victory? Have we, have in a week's time, have we sown up the victory? Have we separated ourselves from God? See, He was faithful in His task. The question is, are we going to be faithful in our task? So I want you to do something with me. I want you to think about where you are with your walk with the Lord. Where you are in, in, in your relationship with the Lord. In, the, in, in, in America, we can ask you a question. Are you a Christian? And most people will answer yes. But then we can ask you... I want, instead of asking that question, we could say, would you explain to me your walk with the Lord? And people can't do that. 
People can't adequately do that. I want you to be able to do that. I want you to be able to say, look, I am tired of sewing up the victory in my life. I'm tired of putting the veil back up in my life. I'm tired of, of, of pulling back walls that, 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 that I needed to let God take down. I'm tired of pulling up walls and creating walls again between me and my family. I'm tired, of, I'm tired of pulling up walls between me and my Savior. I'm tired of pulling up walls between me and the victory financially in my life. I'm tired of pulling up walls and boxing myself in. And I want you to pray this prayer with me. I want you to pray, first of all, a prayer that says, I need you, Lord, in my heart. I want you to forgive me of my sins. I want you to come into my heart and I'm going to repent of those sins. I want you to be able to do that today. So I want you to know that it's after Easter. And we don't, have to, we don't have to live in separation anymore. We don't have to live in a one-time-a-year one uh, 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 event anymore. We don't have to visit the Lord once every, other, once every year and get our fix anymore. We have, a, we, we have an avenue to Jesus, and it's called salvation. And it's called whosoever calls on the name of the Lord. So I want to ask you to do that with me. I want to ask you to pray with me this sinner's prayer. So with your heads bowed and your eyes closed, I ask you to do this with me right now pray it in this fashion dear Jesus I am here I'm in my living room I'm on my phone and I believe I fit into this category I believe I'm sowing up the victory I believe that I've created a separation between you and me that you have clearly wanted to tear down so Lord I'm asking you from the top to the bottom rip this away from me and I'm asking you into my life right now. Lord, I invite you in to forgive me of my sins. I'm asking you, Lord, to forgive me of my sins. I repent of those sins. I invite you in. And Lord, because your word tells me so, I can honestly say that I have confessed with my mouth and believed in my heart that God raised you from the dead. And because of that prayer, and because I've believed in my heart, I am the whosoever that is called on the name of the Lord. And I thank you for what you've just done. In your name I pray, Lord. Amen. Now this is what I want you to do. I want you to email us and let us know that you, you, you just let us know your prayer request. Let us know your victories. Don't sew up this victory. Don't put back up what God's torn down. Don't try to fix it because when we try to put it back up, we'll put it back up from the bottom up. God tears it from the top down. So don't, don't put up what God has torn down. So let's walk in this victory. Well, let's walk in this newness. Let's walk in what God is doing. Let's walk in this victory because you know what? We're going to get out of this stupid pandemic thing. We're going to get away from this dark time. And when we do, we're going to know that we came out of this. Not just, not just out of it like out of the darkness. We come out of this time knowing the Lord and walking in victory. This is the change you've been waiting for. This is your opportunity. So I, I love you guys. Remember, we're Christ Point Church. We're real people living real lives, serving a real God. And we want to tell you, welcome home. You can find us online, YouTube, all that stuff. And in a few weeks when we get started back, we, we don't know. We're, we're announcing this from week to week. But when we get back in services, we're on the square in Sparta. And we're at 614 Murphy Street behind Bumpers in Smithville. We love you guys. Welcome home. Hello again, and thank you for tuning in. I pray that today's sermon has spoken to your heart and has ministered to you well. Uh, we just want you to know that uh, we have two locations, one at our Sparta campus, our main campus at Sparta on the square in Sparta, and our second campus is at Smithville behind Ace Hardware. And we would love for you to call Christ Point Church your church home. And uh, if, you're, if you're viewing this and you can't get, get in, uh, to church and you feel like you, you want to be a part of the church, then you can always be a part of the church. Just just drop us a note and let us know that you enjoy uh, being on board with us. And if you'd like to give and be a part of the ministry, then uh, you can do that by, by just sending a check to one of the locations at 614 Murphy Street, Smithville, 13 Liberty Square in Sparta. And uh, we'll get you on the roll. We just love you so much. And you can download the Christ Point Church of Tennessee app and you can give online. So we are real people 
We're living real lives and we're, we're serving a real God. And we just want to tell everyone, welcome home. We're so glad that you tuned in with us. Welcome home.